I'm going to do a video of the dog. Why? I don't know. Because I am. Poor dog. So, we're going to talk about one of my favorite, favorite tools on the ShopSmith, but also the filthiest tool on the ShopSmith. You definitely do not want to do this. I usually always drag her out for this. I have done it inside before, but this produces a copious amount of freaking sawdust and really thin sawdust depending on the uh, sandpaper you're using. So currently the project today is, uh, and hopefully I might get some video on it, I don't know, is uh, getting the epoxy off these and getting these squared up so I can figure out what I'm going to do with them. I haven't figured out quite what I'm doing with them yet, uh, but I did glue them all together or epoxied them all together, and there's some more of the pretty dog. So this is the uh, Shopsmith belt sander. Um, as you can probably tell, has some pretty nifty features. One, uh, you've got a little Dremel thing here that actually fit, can fit on the mandrel, uh, but uh, they have a little uh, accessory attachment on this, so you could actually fit this on there. I used this last year on um, the bandsaw boxes that I worked on uh, that uh, uh, needed some, you know, they had some negative curvatures and stuff to them, so this worked out really well. So you can do a lot of things with that. Um, a couple things on this. So essentially, uh, it has some adjustments right here uh, that allow you to set it up vertically. So you can set it up, you know, vertically or horizontally as I have it now. You do have a nice fence, which we'll talk about here in a minute. You got some adjustment screws on, uh, here on the fence. You do have a dust collection system, which mine is not hooked up. Uh, and I should someday hook it up, but it, it isn't hooked up. Uh, and then really your adjustment feature for uh, your uh, tracking uh, right here reminds me of a VCR uh, as your belt tracks back and forth. Uh, you've got a little uh, thing in here. It does have the serrated stuff on here, but I gotta say it doesn't turn real easy. And when the, when the, the belt's going over here, it'll shred in a heartbeat. So I usually get a Allen wrench uh, there. Hooks up with your standard, um, you know, to the power unit with your standard stuff. Sits in the little holes uh, down there. A um, couple of neat features to it that I like. One, I also, I like the, uh, so I was talking about how I could do a negative uh, curve on that. I could do the same thing over here. And this is one thing I actually do like, especially when the, the belt gets a little hotter and more limber, is you can actually use this little dimply part right here. Uh, to actually do some curves uh, and sand off some curves and stuff uh, also. So that's kind of neat. Uh, it makes a ton of sawdust. Uh, you can certainly adjust your um, speed uh, on this. And usually I set it right at, uh, it doesn't really have one necessarily for the sander, but usually I'll put it right at about the disc sand or so uh, just to get it rolling. Uh, anywhere uh, from slow to disc sand, I think it's good. You could probably do drum sand if you want. Um, I Dad left me a whole bunch of, uh, well, no, he left me three <laughs> of the belt sanders, and um, the tape didn't last. It's been so long since he actually used the system. Uh, so, so I can order these. They take, I think it's the four inch by... Let me go get my tape measure so I don't lie to you. You do have to special order them because they're not something you're going to find at the box stores. And certainly not something you're going to find at, uh, oh, even some of your, your non-box store stuff. So you kind of go online and look. You can buy them. Uh, so, yeah, they're considered the 6-inch by, I forget, uh, 70, well, no, 6-inch by something or other. <laughs> anyway, look on the Shopsmith. Uh, you can see what they are, so it's pretty nice. Um, this this is kind of a clunky part on here. You can probably see a lot of videos. When you're replacing your blade, you got to, of course, take your blade, your uh, belt. You've got to take this off, so you have to undo your Allen wrench, take this off. Uh, and then, essentially, you could just, uh, you pop. There's a little button thingy here, a little gizmo right there, out of focus, of course. Uh, and you pop it in and it allows you to kind of crank this up and then this will get shorter and then you can just slide your your belt off this way and then put another one on uh, which is nice and then you can put this back on um, and then you have to kind of fiddle with this to get the lock quite right and that's something I haven't figured out a whole lot 
Uh, and I think I watched a video on YouTube where an, a gentleman showed me some information on it, which was nice because there was like nothing uh, on it. Uh, but uh, he didn't really know anything either. There's nothing really in the documentation I could find that really explains what this does. Uh, but it does say, you know, you got your release and you got your belt. Uh, so basically you turn it that way to release it, takes that off, you put your belt on, you play with it, it's, uh, hopefully it snaps in. Uh, you can tell because this little button will pop out. Um, you can't really, you have to feel it, but it, it, it doesn't sit quite flush, so it'll actually pop out if it's engaged. Use your tracker here, so you set it to slow speed. Uh, you use your tracker once you replace the belt to make sure that it's centered, uh, and then you, you kind of go from there. A couple of neat things I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully, uh, today, uh, is, first of all, one of the things I think that really gets me on this belt sander uh, that I love is the fact that I do have... Uh, essentially a little table slash fence however you want to look at it uh, and you can set that to a perfect 90 uh, or a 45 or whatever you need to have you can raise and you can lower it uh, so that's pretty cool uh, pretty easy normal shop smith stuff right you pull it out to loosen you know push it into tighten loose and pull it out to just leave it loose it dangles uh, the other thing i really like about it is is if i have a block so we'll use we'll use one of these for example. If I have a block or a piece of unit that I'm trying to do, I can get a nice um, you know 90 this way. So I've got an uneven end. I can get a nice 90 by holding it up there. Uh, and so essentially, uh, you can square up your pieces. And I will tell you, you can square up depending. You know, again, nothing nothing long, but depending on how how big your stock is you can square up a piece a lot easier on this uh, than you can really your jointer and planer uh, and i'm going to show you uh, kind of my trick to do that so so first uh, of course is you can do that it'll give you a square usually when you're doing the blocks you try to get one flat side uh, so you get a flat side once you get a flat side then you can use the rest of it to square it up now the problem i've had in the past is that I've got two dimensions that I've got square, right? So I've got one here and here, but the problem is is that you can end up with stock like this or like that, and you're not really paying attention because you're sitting over here. And so even though you've got two sides square, I've you know whittled big pieces of wood you know down to nothing trying to get uh, you know six get a cube, right? Get get six square sides. But it dawned on me one day there's a trick to that. And that is the shopsmith comes with this handy little device. This is actually used to make mortise and tenons with the um, table saw. So here's your table saw. This actually slides in and out of the, the, uh, the um, I'll just say groove. I don't know why that it fell out of my head. But essentially, yeah, your miter groove right here. Uh, I actually turned it because you actually can use this knob and flip this piece here around. Uh, in different directions uh, and it's kind of offset if you if you can see that it's kind of offset uh, so basically you use the knob you flip it around uh, and usually for mortise and tenon work there's a piece of wood stuck up you know screwed on here that has a real heavy little clampy deal so you clamp your wood up here you can run it back and forth and cut a cut a you know a, a tenon out of your wood real easy right or or a mortise make sense that's what that's for However, what I've learned is if I take this lovely little device that is, you know, mechanically 90 degrees uh, to the uh, miter slot, if you take it, you take the little clampy thing off, you can take it over here like this, you can slide it up inside here like that. I'm going to go get a hand clamp. You can clamp it down, and now I've got three dimensions that I can get 90 degrees on. So this will be 90 to that. The, this will be 90 to this bottom plate right here. And so basically you can just wedge your board up there and start, start off with one flat side, work from one flat side, and start getting your stuff, and you can make yourself a good cube. Uh, you just got to get a little clamp, hold that in place. So that's kind of a nifty little trick uh, that uh, I enjoy uh, using a lot. 
uh, actually because I use a lot of rough cut wood and that kind of stuff and it just you know it just isn't uh, 90 degrees <laughs> so nothing is 90 degrees so again that's pretty nice of course you couldn't do that with eight foot stock or anything like that but uh, if you're doing little boxes and things like I do uh, smaller smaller stuff uh, that is pretty pretty nifty so anyway that's kind of it for the belt center i'm trying to think if there's anything else i have uh, i'll try to get a little bit of video if i can find my cameraman to shoot maybe one or two uh, minutes of me actually doing a piece of wood here in a minute but that's kind of it yeah you got your little adjustment down here they all just use the little allen wrenches that you put in there it's not really an allen wrench hole you just stuff it in the hole and and move it um, again this one here allows you to raise and lower uh, however you want it i kind of i kind of like this for storage uh, to be quite honest uh, so um and that was probably the only other thing i think i'll hit you up with is you know i talked about these little roller units i got some nifty little uh thing off pinterest uh from the 40s uh, or 50s i guess it was the 50s on storing some of the shop smith stuff and uh, got downloaded their schematics so there's its little roller uh, so it sits flat in there and then basically uh, i can shove the entire shop smith up into that section and all of this sits underneath of it so the only thing that doesn't sit underneath of it is that unit right there but i can get all all of these up underneath there and to a certain extent the uh, even the uh, router table so anyway so that's going to be it i'm going to make a lot of dust i'm going to close the garage door because uh, this thing puts out a ton of uh shavings i guess sawdust so that's it so talking about setting this up for 90 so i got my little clamp in here you do have to push this in a little ways uh it does you know get floppy uh, as you go further further out uh, so you want to make sure you get your little machine is square uh, so right there i'm 90 to the the floor and then uh this should keep you 90, uh, but basically just use a clamp. There is a hollow back here, so you'll want to use, if you're using a clamp like I am, you, you'll want to use the screw part on this, because uh, this is cast. Uh, but you should have your 90 right there, so that's what gets you your cubes. So you'll put your board up there, you'll turn it. I'll do a, uh, uh, show you that here in just a second. but. Yeah, that's it. So you got your two 90s, got your 90 there, and your 90 there, and then that'll allow you to make a cube, have something to reference against. So that's a nice little, nice little tool. I'll use that probably more than I do the mortise and pin. All right, so let's turn this puppy on. Yeah. All right, you can stop. All right, a little finishing video on this. Uh, just you kind of missed some of the cleanup. I, I have to say, uh, even with the garage dropped down, I had probably about six inches of the garage door open. It still had a layer of dust all the way out to here. Uh, I had to get rid of uh, <laughs> pretty impressive, just probably half an inch thick dust all over the driveway. This thing puts out some uh, some outage, uh, some sawdust in a heartbeat. And it's all very fine talc stuff, too. So there's a bunch of it down there. Uh, there's other the other sawdust. The rougher stuff is from the planer. Uh, but every bit of the thin stuff you see, which is coated all the way out to there, uh, still got stuff on this. So even when the wind's blowing, uh, I will not use this thing inside. I uh, had some interesting developments while I was working on all of these. Uh, some rubber thing inside there broke. So really the power just like dropped immensely. I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I, I cranked her up, um, cranked up the power unit up to Magnadato and uh, could, be, could been, she's old and tired. And I had been running her a while. She's it's not too bad. Uh, might be time to oil her up and everything again. 
It's been a little while since I did that. But, um, but I think it started, so first of all, the tracking thing started kind of going off on me. I don't know what started there, uh, but the belt was going all over the place. Um, so I had to get in under control, had to change it uh, a bunch of times, just mid while I was you know, in the middle of sanding. Uh, so it was really about the last four, and then I kept hearing thump, 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 and then that that uh, little rubber thing fell out of here. So I'm gonna have to probably take the uh, this off and take the belt off and look inside there, and make sure there's nothing damaged. But I still kept working on her. Uh, definitely need to oil her up, uh, and she's tracking something severe here. So you can see there's another piece of that rubber. Uh, so I don't know what was rubber inside that delaminated and fell apart. Fell apart, but it did. Uh, but she seemed to run fine. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as the uh, little blocks go, I uh, was able to get them all squared up uh, as best as I could. Uh, this top isn't perfectly square, so now, so the ones I show you, you've got a gap. <laughs> but they're not too bad. Um, i got to get them glued together. Uh, so that I can figure out what I am going to do with them. I have not figured that out yet. So, uh, but these are the ones I tried to put through the planer, uh, that the planer ate and flung across the wall and workshop at me. Uh, so not too bad, but here's, here's the, here's the one that started the whole, whole ordeal. And I think the other... Still's got some pretty big gouges out of it too, so that's that's that piece there. That was the the second time I tried it. Um, it, it caught this piece too. So so yeah, but other than that, they look pretty good. Uh, so I'm thinking about maybe a cutting board. I don't know. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet. Uh, but I am. I'm thinking maybe a cutting board, uh, cutting boards, plural, uh, something. I really need to cut them all. I need to cut them all to the same size uh, and I've got some more blocks in there to do but these are kind of neat uh, so the different types of wood uh, on this real quick are Paduk uh, that is um, mulberry Osage orange purple heart that if I'm not mistaken is <laughs> so what is that yeah I think that's uh I don't remember what that is. That might be some oak. Uh, got the, the Kulaba, Kulaba, maple. Uh, this is actually, I think, some uh, some gum. So some red gum that I had. Uh, just assorted pieces from when I was making the boxes. Some more uh, mulberry. Uh, the Kulaba. Some, some um, sapwood on maple that's actually maple which is interesting get all sorts of little pieces of wood in here got a really pretty piece of maple right there not real sure i like that cut i got a cut right there and uh didn't get all the epoxy off there but i figure once i get all these glued up i'll run them through the planer uh when they're bigger um got uh, some interesting uh maple almost look like lace wood i used pieces of this uh, in the there you go. I used pieces of this in the um, For one of the butterflies. Uh, I love the dimples on there almost looks like lace wood uh, Yeah, just all assorted stuff. This is actually uh, the, the this wood right here uh, was some wood I picked up that was really pretty cool um, There's another piece right there that actually is persimmon uh, So it's persimmon I got in Albuquerque, which is kind of interesting Got some more Kulaba, if you don't know what that is. That is some Australian eucalyptus. Uh, pretty heavy, dense wood. Uh, it is kind of pretty, though. Uh, so, it smells, boy, when I, I can tell when I'm sanding it or cutting it, because it smells just like eucalyptus. Uh, got some just different woods in there. This is just some spalted... Might be some spalted maple. That's some spalted maple. This is... That might be some hackberry. That might be some hackberry. So, so I don't know. Uh, I tried to make everything in grain just in case I was going to do a cutting board. Um, so, uh, try to get as in grain as I could. 
see like this uh, this side i know this side's thinner than that so it wasn't perfectly uh, i got all the edges square the heights aren't perfectly perfect but i figured once i get them glued together i'll get them in the in the planer and we'll we'll thickness plane all of them uh, so anyway so using this uh just be aware that uh Put it outside. Uh, get, get your dust collection system on it or something uh, because it puts out a ton of uh, debris. Uh, so anyway, next thing for me is to get this in the garage. I still have the old casters on here. I bought a new caster set. That's going to be a video I do uh, with the wife at some point. Um, so I'm going to change, swap those casters out. and got new casters new wheels which will make it a lot easier going up and down the garage so i'm gonna have to battle a, a pile of cats uh and a compressor uh that had to be moved uh and other than that i'm gonna go eat so there we go